Well, the battle for the presiding offices of the 10th National Assembly is getting more intense as aggrieved aspirants fight on. The seven coalition of uh, speakership aspirants known as the G7 have now met with the Greater Majority Caucus with a resolve to present a consensus candidate for the Speaker and Deputy Speaker positions. At the meeting in Abuja, the G7 aspirants restated their commitment to work with the Minority Caucus in a bid to present a common front. And in the midst of the discontent to the party's choice of candidates, Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu have continued to receive a grand swell of support. National Assembly correspondent Jokia Desai reports. Like a bolt out of the blue, APC's choice of Tajuddin Abbas as speaker for the next House of Representatives jolted many. The zoning arrangement for the presiding offices of the two chambers obviously stirred controversy among aggrieved aspirants. No less than 10 returning members spread across different geographical locations signified interest in occupying the seat of speaker and deputy speaker in the House of Representatives. The current deputy speaker, Hamed Wasi, House leader, Halazan Adodogua, Chairman Appropriation, Mokhtar Betara, Chairman Navy, Yusuf Gagdi, Chairman Water Resources, Sado Soli, Chairman Media and Public Affairs, Benjamin Kalu, and Aminu Jaji from Zamfara, lead the pack. The only woman in the race is Miriam Munoha, the Chairman Committee on Persons with Disabilities. Others are Jiga Legislator Maki Yelema and Rahim Olawi from Kwara State. Those that are aggrieved are questioning the rationale behind giving out one presiding office each to the Northwest region in the two chambers of the National Assembly. They also query the role being played by the outgoing Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila, accusing him of forcing his successor on them. They took their grievances to the party. At his official entry into the race, Mokhtar Betara echoed the voice of other contestants when he said Tajuddin Abbas remains relatively unknown to his colleagues, even as a serving member of the House. The media group of Tajuddin Abbas responded swiftly. It ruled out his legislative inputs in the last four years. Then the consultations began. Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu moved from one governor to another, met with traditional rulers and other political and religious leaders to seek their support. Their efforts over the past weeks now appear to be yielding fruits. In the last one week, state governors across party lines have pledged their inflation support to the team. Words of wisdom also came from President of the Senate hopeful, Gatri Akwabio. In your daily dreams, my late mother told me that I should be aware of the three Gs. The first G is God Almighty. The second G is what? The God. And the third one is what? The government. May you, may you conduct your affairs mindful of the admonition of my late mother by respecting the three Gs. And for the first time since the controversy began, Speaker Femi Gbajabi Amila chose to respond to his critics. One of the reasons why Northwest, they wanted, Northwest wanted vice president. The president-elect decided to go to the Northeast. So the least he could do was to compensate them with the speakership. Some of the leading aspirants, including the House leader, Halazana Dodogua, have also announced their withdrawal from the race. I am here to put on the record that not just from today, that right from day one, when the and after zoning, with all sense of morality, microzone it to the Northwest and micro, microzone it to my brother. <laughs> right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, representing Zaria Federal Constituency from Northwestern Nigeria. As from that date and day, I therefore called my bid to contest for the speakership of the 10th House of Representatives of. A faction of the minority caucus has equally adopted Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu as its candidates. We have found in the two persons of Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu a leadership that will allow for fairness, equity, as well as provide a world platform for all political parties represented in parliament to have a say in the running of the legislature. To the credits of the party's anointed candidates, it is the result of the second group of the minority caucus 
not to contend the seat with the majority party. Days ago, the group met with Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila at the Joint Tax Forum. While it is yet to be categorical in its next line of action, the faction of Minority Caucus agreed on the need for consensus building in the overall interest of the institution. No member of the Minority Caucuses, better known as the Greater Majority, stepped forward for presiding the role of presiding officers. It is my hope and desire that all the contestants will be seen, we sit down, agree, where there are compromises to be made, we are willing to do that. So I want to assure you that we are moving, maybe slowly but surely. And at the end of the day, we will ensure Allah will have a rancorous free election come June 13. Some of his colleagues also exonerate Femi Bajabi Amila from any blame. The legislature is always independent. Anybody that is chosen understands that he has to be independent, but there also has to be interdependence between the executive and the legislature. So each of the arm of government can't do without the other. So we need a legislature, a speaker that would understand that he has to fight for the independence of the legislature and at the same time work harmoniously with the executive. Somebody is planning to impeach speaker. He's uh, a very good speaker who he has performed his duty uh, in terms of uh, delivering uh, good parliamentary works to the people of Nigeria. I look at the interest of members as a whole uh, and then looking at it from the angle that we are coming from the minority party and again looking at proper parliamentary practice. I think that the party with majority in parliament should always produce the speaker. That is a practice all over. The favored duo pledged to continue consultations to the date of the inauguration and hope that other aspirants will shed their salts. While some of the aggrieved aspirants are not backing down, their state governors have promised to wade in, and what the weeks ahead signify is that they may finally bow to the party as the supreme organ. Whatever position they take, they count down to the June 13 inauguration. It's on. Joker Edsa. TVC News, Abuja.